Hi, my name is Karen. Hi, and I'm Renee. And we're neighbors in Colorado. And as we were walking our dogs, we discovered that we both love cooking. So we decided to start thebakingshow.com. Today is our first installment. We're actually going to make a favorite of Renee's. So Renee, if you could tell us a little bit about the background. Sure. Okay, I come from Jersey originally. And there was this wonderful bakery. Uh, it was up in Burden County, and it was called B&W's. And if anybody from the East Coast is watching this, most people know about B&W's Bakery. One of the wonderful things they had was a crumb cake. And we used to go there every Sunday morning almost with my parents, and we'd pick up rolls and buns and crumb cake. And it, it's just wonderful. But we moved out to Colorado, and I can't get crumb cake anymore. They don't even have a good crumb cake here in Colorado. So I've been trying to copy B&W's recipe, and I think I've come up with something that works really well, and it's pretty much um, it's pretty much a dead ringer for it. Awesome. So the recipe is a combination of two recipes put together. It is a German yeast dough mm -hmm. on the bottom, and it is the American style crumbs on the top. So um, I invite you to come and bake with us and try this. And if you really like it, we would love you to put comments on. And people who have tried B&W's crumb cake, let me know what you think. OK, so Renee, it looks like we have the scalded milk here. I see the steam is rising out of it. Um, so how did you scald it? Well, we put this in the microwave. And we put it on, it's a half a cup of whole milk is what you use. And we put it on for about one minute. Now this has to cool down for about 10 minutes because once it's scalded, the temperature's up there. So it has to get down to between 110 and 120. Ooh. And so if you let it rest for about 10 minutes, you can just touch it with your finger and it should be lukewarm to your finger. Or if you have an instant read thermometer, you just take that and put it in. And if you come up anywhere between 110 and 120, you're good to go and we can continue the recipe. So that temperature then is for the yeast so that you don't kill the yeast. Is that why such That's a right. narrow range? Okay, good. Yeah. It has, if it's too hot, you're right, you will kill the yeast. Mm -hmm. And then it's... It goes your own so this is the yeast uh, and for this recipe we need, let's see, we've got the ingredients listed up here. Uh, one pack or two and a quarter teaspoons. Right. If you use the kind that comes in the package, it's just one package of yeast. I have the kind that's in the jar, so then you need to measure it. And one package of yeast equals two and a quarter teaspoons. So you just pop that in here. And for this recipe, you're also going to need a quarter cup of sugar. And out of that quarter cup of sugar, you're going to take one, ta one teaspoon of that, and you're going to mix it into the yeast and the milk mixture. Okay. So we take one teaspoon here. So I, I've read about that before, so that um, the yeast actually feeds off of the sugar, I guess, and makes it uh, more active. That's right. Okay. Great. So just stir that up now, and then what is the next step? We're looking for that yeast to start bubbling. It's going to come out nice and foamy. You're going to see it's going to rise, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a layer of nice foam on top. So you really need to let this sit for probably about 10 minutes, and then you're good to go. So this is uh, sort of testing the yeast. Now, if it doesn't rise, then you've got yeast that's not good, correct? Yeah, you have your to yeast is bad, you need to throw it out and start it again. Because if it doesn't rise, your recipe's not going to turn out. Okay. So okay. what we're going to take is two and a quarter cups of unbleached flour. You just add that to your mixing bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we're going to take the sugar next, mm -hmm. and we're going to put that in. And so you're mixing all the dry ingredients first. Right. Like, and then we're going to use the lemon zest. You take one, this skin of one lemon, and you're going to zest it. It has to be finely zested, and you're going to mix that in. Great. Do we use that? And we add yep. the butter. Flour, sugar, butter, then lemon, and then beat three minutes. <laughs> Our soft butter got a little uh, <laughs> It's cold in color. OK, now, so. you're supposed to have the butter should be cold. Uh, you can use salted or unsalted butter. Mm -hmm. It is four tablespoons. Um, I usually like to soften it, though. I find it's much easier to mix in a recipe. Mm -hmm. And it's just a regular towel. It's just a towel attachment, right? Mm -hmm. And that's for the first part. Then we're going to use the dough hook a little bit later. Okay. okay. Uh, and how long do you beat this, or what is it that, that you beat it for? About three minutes. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking for is the dough to be kind of mealy or grainy looking. Okay. So now that we have it looking like the texture of sand, we're going to change out to the dough hook, and then we're going to add our next ingredients. And that would be. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we have yeast, and it's risen, so you can yeah. see the foaminess. There's a nice foam on top. And you just dump that in here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to pour the eggs in. And this, these are two eggs. We didn't eat them ahead of time. We're just going to let the yeah. mixer do its thing. And we're just going to add in. Okay, our dough is just about ready. I'm going to turn this off. And it's nice and elastic. So we're going to kind of scoop that off the beater. And it's a little sticky still? It is a little sticky. This one is, it, it's nice and smooth, mm -hmm. but it also has a little bit of a sticky texture to it. So we're going to take this and we're going to pop it into another bowl. And then we're going to sprinkle the top with one tablespoon of flour. Mm -hmm. Kind of pat it around and then we turn it over so that both sides are kind of coated a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to cover it. You can cover it with a towel, you can cover it with some plastic wrap, and you let it rise for about an hour. Okay, let's check on our dough. I did use the method where I heated, preheated the oven to 170 degrees. When it hit temp, turned it off, put it in there, because it's kind of cool today. So we wanted to get this to rise a little bit faster. And yeah, here's how the dough looks. And now we're ready to prepare the dough. So we're going to take that, you can use a counter service, a board, whatever you have. Just going to sprinkle a little flour on it, and then we're going to take the dough out of the bowl, plop it on there, and we're going to shape it into two balls. So we have to split it in half. So I see you have the, uh, a scale here, but you don't have to use a scale to develop. No, I mean, right? you know, you can pretty much eyeball it. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have mm. to come out exactly. But if you're very precise. You can just put it on your scale, weigh it out, so that both halves come out totally equal, but it doesn't have to be that way. So, and once you have that, good. Great. So then we're going to take this and we're just going to shape it into, you want to shape the other one, Karen? Sure. Just put it into two round balls. This is my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dough is amazingly uh, light and uh, pliable. I, I just love this. Yeah. You know, they say when you're making dough like this, you're supposed to make it feel like your earlobe. Mm. This definitely That's does. Yeah. It really yeah. Does. So it should be nice and soft. Mm -hmm. And we've just patted it. You just want to take a little flour, put it on top, mm -hmm. so it doesn't dry. So do you have to let it rest at this point? You do. We're going to okay. let it rest for 10 minutes, and we're going to cover it with a clean kitchen towel. Great. So we're going to take this and put this one. Okay, and 10 minutes, we'll put the rest of the recipe together. Right. So okay. Renee, I noticed that you you put a little divot in that uh, in that one. Is that to monitor how it rises? Right, and that's just to see it, just how your dough is doing. And these look fine. They look like they are ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll these out now. And this is in two nine by nine inch pans is the the size of the pan that you would put these in and when we put them in you want to make sure that you use butter and you butter your pan well you don't want to use spray with it so we're going to take this and the idea is to roll each one of these out to the size of the pan so i think the ultimate goal is to get it to about a quarter of an inch about a quarter of an inch but you can just eyeball i never really you know as long as it looks good and it's got to be kind of rectangular mm -hmm. or square. I can hold the pan uh, upside down over it and we'll kind of get a sense for where we need to go with it. It's a fabulous idea. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Where are we? Uh, almost there, just a little bit. On each corner? On each there. corner. Okay. Yeah. So then we're just going to take this. Any particular techniques for moving dough that. I don't have great techniques for moving <laughs> dough. I just kind of plop it in. <laughs> and then you're going to spread it to the size of the pan. Um, they tell you that you don't want to make a rim with it. So you want to try and get it as flat in the pan as you can and cover all the spaces. So it should come out well, looking like this. So it's flat and it's in. And we're good. Now we're going to take this and we're going to let it rest again. We're going to cover it with a towel so that the dough doesn't dry out. And we're going to move on and we're going to make the crumbs for the topping. All right, now we're going to make the crumb topping for the crumb cake. And this is a heavy duty crumb cake. So there are a lot of big crumbs in it. So there's a lot of um, ingredients you're gonna need to make the topping. So we have five cups of flour, one pound of butter melted, you can use salted or unsalted, four and a half cups of sugar, 
two tablespoons of cinnamon. For our friends who live in a high altitude area like we do, um, you need to cut your sugar. So if you anywhere, if you're like at 5,000 to 6,000 feet, you need to take out about two tablespoons of sugar per cup. Mm -hmm. And if you're at 7,000 and above, then it's three tablespoons per cup. And that's where we are. So okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody at sea level, just keep the four and a half cups. You're good to go. So you want to just start adding to the flour then? Yeah, okay. we're going to add the flour and the sugar. We're just going to pop that in. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to throw in the cinnamon. Yum. And then we're just going to mix it up. Just can't have enough streusel on any yeah. recipe, <laughs> so I think this is awesome. Too. And that's, that was the amazing thing about B&Ws. Mm -hmm. When it comes out, um, you have like this much cake on the bottom, mm -hmm. and you have crumbs like this. It's just mm -hmm. fabulous. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. fabulous. So you just want to get this mixed up pretty well and just incorporate it a little bit. And then we're going to pour the butter in. And when we pour the butter in, I'm going to use my hands because it's much easier to mix it. Now there are two ways to do this. You can melt the butter, uh, which is what I do because it, it comes, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You know, or you can just soften the butter and then mix that in. But that takes a little bit longer. So um, I found I like to melt the butter. It just makes it easier. You can do this alone, but when you have yep. someone help it, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So for a little bit of butter, just pop the whole thing. Yeah, it's pop the whole thing. Wow. Okay. There so since I've, I've never tasted this crumb cake before, you were talking about how part of the characteristic of it was that the, the crumbs are um, pretty lumpy, pretty big, substantial clumps. For that. They are, and then you, then you have yeah. to form them that way. Yeah. Okay, and now we're going to add the crumbs to the cake. So first thing you want is just a layer of crumbs on the bottom of the cake. Mm -hmm. So you just take it and you would just put it like this. Mm -hmm. You just put little crumbs all over the place. Just let it drop. So you're going to layer these then? Um, you're going to get. You're going to coat the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you're going to make the big crumbs, and we're going to put them on top. Okay. Okay. This is what it should look like. And as you can see, both Karen and I have covered all the dough. So you, don't, you can't see any of it. You all be covered with crumbs. Now we're going to pop this in the oven. I happen to have a double oven, so I'm going to put one in each. They are each preheated to 350 degrees and you're supposed to cook it for about a half an hour, um, 30 minutes. But sometimes when you're at higher altitude, things cook mm -hmm. a little faster. So I am at higher altitude, so I'm going to pop this in for 25 minutes and then I'm going to check it. You can, usually the, the standard way is if a knife comes out clean from the center, it's done. But a better method is if you have one of those digital thermometers, you can put it in. Anything you bake with flour should be at 181 to 183 degrees. Okay, the buzz went off. I think the crumb cake's done. Oh, and there it is, and it's a beauty. Nice big crumb. The crumb cake has completely cooled down. And the last step before we serve it is we give it a generous sprinkling of powdered sugar. And it kind of makes it look pretty too. So this is the copycat of the B&W crumb cake. As you can see, it has, you know, a, a, a small part that's crust and a large part that's heavy crumb. So this is the best part. We get the to taste it. Part. We get to eat it. To friends and baking oh. and showing that anybody can bake bread. So come join us on thebakingshow.com and let us know what you think of this and if there are other recipes that you'd like to see or have us uh, feature for you. Yeah, and if you have some comments that you'd like to pop in um, or questions on our website, um, feel free to do that and we'll see what we can... That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good.